Now, what I'd like to do is I'd like to solve two examples for the Trescott criterion. And the first one will have to do with a cylindrical pressure vessel. So it's going to be a pipe with closed ends. And the pipe has a wall thickness of 10 millimeters, um, has a radius of 0.3 meters. Um, eventually, it will be thin-walled. We already see that the ratio of T to R is very, very small. So the radius from the center of the cylinder to the inner surface, outer surface, somewhere in the middle, really doesn't matter. We have just one radius. And it is pressurized internally to 20 MPa. Now here, let me append two remarks to our our earlier discussions or remind you again, well, when we say 20 MPa, this is, if you like, the difference between the inner pressure and the outer pressure. Um, that's the only thing that matters. Uh, so, and it is in this case, the internal one is higher. So we say it's internally pressurized. What's the difference between internal and outer pressurized vessels? If it's internal, the internal pressure tries to rupture the pipe apart. So the stress is axial and tangential that hold it together. They are tensile. If it is externally pressurized, so the outer pressure is larger and the difference would have been, say, 20 MPa again, then the outer pressure, larger pressure, the difference of 20 MPa would be trying to compress the cylinder and lead to a compressive stresses. That's the only difference, okay? And knowing the sign, of course, is important in general. So in this case, I know the stresses will be um, tensile. Additionally, there is a torque. Without saying, uh, we understand that to be the about the axis of the pipe. So I try to torque it like this, okay? Um, so that's 1,200 uh, kilonewton meters. And the material is given as 18 Ni maraging steel. And we need to look up in the material tables and find that this is a ductile material because the yield strength is provided and the yield strength is quite high, 1791 MPa. And the uh, question is, what's the safety factor against yielding? And we are going to use the um, Tresca criterion, so I just already called it um, excess. So, well, the first thing we need to do is always remember that the safety factor is given in terms of the ratio of the critical value of a stress with respect to the um, value of the maximum equivalent stress. So. I'm going to solve this problem directly the way I like to solve it. So I'm going to think in terms of shear stresses. And I know that there is a critical value of the shear stress I can apply, and I have an equivalent shear stress that I can, that I currently have that's associated with the state of loading. I remember from the uniaxial tension test that the associated critical shear stress is the shear strength under shear essentially, which corresponds to sigma naught over two or yield strength corresponds to a shear maximum stress of sigma naught over two. And T bar is nothing but, according to Tresca, or the maximum shear stress yield criterion, the absolute maximum uh, shear stress that I observe in the structure. Okay, so um, that's the criterion that I have. And now I go ahead and try to find what those values are. So I start with and remind, remind myself that the absolute maximum shear stress is determined in terms of the principal stresses, but first I go ahead and determine what the actual state of loading is. So the axial stress is simply PR over 2T, and the tangential stress is PR over T. Um, we've actually solved this example uh, before. The tangential stress is 600 MPa, and the axial one is 300 MPa. Um, there is a shear stress on the plane with normal x in the tangential direction, that's, that's the shear stress, and it is TR over J. So in this case, uh, we do have a thin-walled structure, and as a result of that, um, all we need to consider is an approximate polar moment of inertia, which is the area of the thin cross-section, which is the 
circumference times the thickness, and I consider its second moment, r squared. Okay, so that's a quick way to remember what the moment of inertia, um, polar moment of inertia should be. Um, and therefore, the expression simplifies to t over 2 pi r squared t, which comes out to be 212 MPa. Okay. Now, I am going to make the assumption that sigma r is zero. Okay, sigma r is not zero. On the outside, it's zero. On the inside, it is equal to minus 20 MPa. So it will have an effect for sure on my safety factor, but 20 MPa is very small with respect to the other values. So I'm going to imagine or uh, rightly imagine so that that effect is quite negligible. So then the, let me go ahead and now find the principal uh, stresses from which I can find the absolute maximum shear stress. So I need to draw the more circle. Um, we have one point which is sigma x and 300. So if this is 300 MPa, say this is my point x minus tau xt. That's our convention. So this is 300 and minus 212, um, everything is in MPa. And then there is the other point, which is at 600 and plus 212 MPa. Okay. Um, then I go ahead and draw the circle. So that is going to be the diameter of the circle, and that is the circle itself. Okay. Um, the center of the circle is at A equals 600 plus 300 over 2, 450 MPa. The radius of the circle is going to be say 600 minus 450 or 450 minus 300, 150 squared plus that value squared square root. If you calculate that, you will find that it is approximately 259.7. Um, okay, so that is the um, radius of the, of the circle. So um, I'm going to go ahead and try to focus this. I notice that sometimes we lose focus. Um, all right, so that's 259.7, and therefore the principal stresses are four hundred fifty plus that seven hundred nine point seven, or sigma two, which is equal to hundred ninety point three. Okay, all right. Um, so, well, what's the third principal stress? The third principal stress is sigma 3. I am assuming that it is, which is equal to sigma r in reality, but I'm assuming sigma r is negligible, so it's zero. And therefore, the absolute maximum shear stress is going to occur with respect to rotations in the 1, 3 plane, and it's going to be a maximum value that has to do with this blue circle and therefore tau max is equal to sigma 1 over 2 which is equal to three hundred fifty four point eight roughly um, so if I had not omitted the value of sigma r, say, say I wanted to look at the inner surface, and that would be the more critical surface to look at because on the outside it's exactly zero sigma r. On the inner surface of the pipe, it's going to be compressive. So it's not zero, a little bit to the left, but how much? Minus 20. So I have to move to the left by 20. 
This point corresponds to 190, 20 is going to be very close to this point. So overall, you can see that the absolute maximum shear stress is really not going to change much. And in fact, the safety factor just changes by two or three percent. So eventually, this is really a safe scenario where we can omit the uh, radial stress. Okay, so I'm almost done now. I can go ahead and calculate the safety factor, which is going to be equal to the strength un for under tension divided by 2, that is the critical value of the shear stress, divided by 354.8, which is 2.52. Now, let us remember what the stencil says. Okay? The stencil says that you take a function in terms of sigma 1, 2, and 3, and for the, the Tresca criterion, it is equal to the maximum value of 1 minus 2, 2 minus 3, 3 minus 1. And that defines an equivalent normal stress versus a shear stress. So that's the equivalent normal stress for our criterion, which is supposed to be less than or equal to the yield strength. So we're taking the difference, and that's exactly what we're doing here as well. So the maximum difference in this case is 1 minus 2 is smaller than sigma 2, 3 is 0, is less than the absolute value of sigma 1. So in this particular case, this is equal to sigma 1, which is positive, so no need for an absolute value. So that's 709, okay, which is equal to, which should be less than or equal to sigma naught. So the safety factor, again, is equal to, for this criterion, is sigma naught over sigma 1, which is 709.7. 709.7 is twice this value. So if you take this 2, put it here, that's sigma 1. And that's the yield strength. So the safety factor is the same no matter how you go ahead and try to think about this problem. Okay? If you remember this, it's okay. But physically, I think this is a better way to understand and express what is going on. So that's our first example. I'm going to solve another one next.